Well, well, in jail again. Shit. 153 days in- Oh, only 150 days! <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I guess that the, the, the good favor of uh, the, the, the finish is, uh, is a bit extreme. <laughs> How's it going people? Jack here with another reaction to part 2 this time of Martin Sitovens' My Summer Car. The previous one was pretty awesome. I like how well that game runs and kind of how punishing it was to him. Like it's that feeling of like early 2000s games. Like it doesn't seem polished at all. Like the game looks very rough around the edges but you know that a lot of faults have been put into them. Like, you know, early titles, maybe not so much the do sex kind, right? It's an immersive sim, that's something completely different. But think of something like uh, Wizardry, for example. I, I'm talking about the type of game that would like punish you so much that it makes you irritated, but as soon as you succeed, you feel so complete. But that said though, folks, without further ado, let us not straight up jump into the video because there's a little thing that I have to address. For earlier this week, I got a uh, gift from a friend with a uh, picture of Peter Stromer with uh, Hungarian subtitles. So puzzled, obviously, I uh, asked her why. She said, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Finnish is not Proto-Germanic, it's Uralic. And yes, it is. And I apologize about that. Gemma, are you happy? Are you happy now? Great, so let's continue. Hello again. Welcome back to Finland. Yay. In the last video, we experienced the many wonders of Finnish culture. Building a rally car, getting very intoxicated, tractor driving, bug, dying of dehydration, hydraulic press channel, dying for pissing on the TV, dying from giant wasps, getting into a bus, having the bus collide with another car head-on, getting stuck, reverting your progress, hopping on a motorbike and dying from a rally car smashing into you at 150 kilometers an hour. BAM. No! You know, normal Typical finish stuff. Finish stuff yeah. Last video we died a lot of times, and made zero progress, because every time I died, I had to start over from the beginning. In this video, I've disabled permadeath. Trust me, this was a good idea. Mm -hmm. Today, we're gonna actually build up our rally car, and, with some luck, win the rally. Death will not stop us. But stop being the on the TV. So <laughs> let us begin. We began back at home with the car ready for assembly. No Finnish home is truly complete without having one of your son's bedrooms or perhaps the husband's uh, being uh, adorned with some Finnish metal bands poster. With the car ready for assembly. I got the wheels from the wasp infested mansion and the car was built. To get the car running, I had to buy a few more things from town. Of course, the only vehicle I had access to was the slow, not fun, very boring tractor. Normally getting to town would take it about 15 minutes. However, I got into town significantly faster because of this. Oh, the trick. <laughs> but the why? The train. Disabling permadeath was one of the best decisions <laughs> I've ever made in my entire life. Because if I had to build the car again, things would have gone down very differently. I woke up in the graveyard in town, bought the battery I needed, and pondered how to get home. Our best option was getting a ride from the guy in the green car. My cousin. Pena. Hmm. This is- It's funny because- <laughs> Yes, yes, coincidentally, just like in that message that I received earlier this week, you- You know the, the, the things with pronunciations of words in uh, Finnish? Um, like- Penna, of course, means fuck, but penna with double N means fuck it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was just a nice coincidence. It's a man that has nothing better to do than drive along the dirt road <laughs> at ridiculous speeds, 24 hours a day, one hand on the wheel, and the other on the vodka. Family. Definitely someone I'd like to climb into a car with. Now, if you were being driven home by a raging alcoholic, do you think swearing at him would be a good idea? No, not so much. Shortly after giving him the finger, he stopped the gas, accelerated to a very high speed, launched the car at 100 kilometers an hour directly into a tree, and we both died. Perhaps in an earlier life, Penna was a rally driver. Who knows? Maybe swearing at him was not such a good idea. So this time, I let him drive me home at a much more reasonable 60 kilometers an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you know what can go a lot faster than 60 kilometers an hour? The F-14 Today's sponsor. <laughs> Today's sponsor, War Hunter. I mean War Thunder. That's right, boys. Wow. The most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever created. 2,000 vehicles, tanks, aircraft, helicopters, and... Oh, no. <laughs> 
Yeah. Combined arms warfare. What does that even mean? I have no idea. It's either multiple modes of combat within the same battle space or something to do with Ooh. Siamese twins. Every single vehicle is detailed and modeled down to the smallest detail. Health bars? No. You fool. You idiot. You moron. Every component is... I'm sorry. It's funny because last month, Seth got... He got a sponsorship, made an entire extremely hilarious video out of it. Then we got this. Deeply oh no, my tracks have been shot. Oh no, my turret can't rotate. Oh no. I'm dead. War Hunter, I mean War Thunder, offers the most immersive possible combat experience. And guess what? It's free. Play it now on PC, Xbox Series XS, PlayStation 5, or any previous generation console. War Hunter, <laughs> I mean War Thunder spans over 100 years of vehicle warfare. Bike lanes, gunships, whatever the hell this thing is. Hunter. Wait, you don't have a joystick to fly the F-14 Tomcat? Don't you worry, fucko, you can fly with a mouse. My favorite thing about War Hunter, I mean War Thunder, is the frighteningly deep knowledge within the community. Some might say too deep. Play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description, and you'll get a bunch of free stuff. Multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters and much much more what are you waiting for download today and fly a 50 million dollar jet directly into the ground question if you have a rig like the one that we saw before which game is better to play war thunder or project wingman because from what i gathered the community behind project wingman truly made an effort to make it as realistic as it gets of course i've only seen the vr aspect out of it but uh i suppose that with a setup like that you could achieve something similar <clears throat> anyway we were not in fact in an f-14 tomcat but in penner's green car i stopped him at the side of the tractor and hopped out to survey the damage to make a very long oh. painful story short this tractor is a fucking bastard <laughs> the very next thing i did was disconnect the tractor from the trailer oh no which was a terrible mistake I fetched the bike back from home and used it to unflip the tractor with about 10 minutes of finagling. Yes! Now from here you'd think things would be easy, right? I could just simply use the tractor to flip over the trailer and then drive off. Nope. First, what? I tried lifting the trailer with the fork loader. It didn't work. Oh Shit. no! I unflipped the tractor again. Yes! And tried ramming it. No 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 It didn't even work. did it against a tree. Stop! No! Oh my god! Another 10 minutes of finagling with the bike, and the tractor was unflipped again. What? <laughs> this time, I took Collision a bit detection slower, here is with the messed up. And finally got the trailer flipped the right way around. And the tractor flipped over again. No! Another flip of the tractor. And oh! Oh, I see what's happening here. So after the collision with the train, the tractor's rig literally adopted the flip down position as its base and another attempt i got the trailer completely flat with the help of the tractor and tried bumping it with a beer case to help get the wheels unstuck what and this happened what <laughs> this was after 40 minutes of the same bullshit happening oh, over no. and over i'd get the trailer flat to the ground it would spring itself back into position and i'd be yep. back at square one i couldn't take it it was time to cheat I went back home, saved the game, installed the grab anything mod, and went back to the scene of the crime. It turns out this was actually a great idea. When I picked <laughs> up the trailer, it behaved normally. But when I let it go, it did this. <laughs> when I disconnected the trailer yep, at the very beginning, down. it locked it into that orientation at that position, so when I tried to move it, it would force itself back. Yep. The only way to unlock it would be to attach it to the tractor, which was not possible with the trailer on its side. So to fix it, I grabbed the trailer, oriented it the right way around, and stuck it to the tractor. Oh my god. Oh. It worked. Back home, it was time to continue building the Satsuma, which I had managed to get running only- Or, or it is very likely that the person who rigged this thing together did that purposefully. Because perhaps in the in the beginning of the t testing of the game, they just couldn't adjust it correctly and they just decided to leave it as it was. I'm going for that option. Only for one of its pistons to commit die and fire itself out of the engine. Oh. I replaced the piston and head gasket, fired up the car again, and took her for another test drive. Oh no, oh dear. Oh no, oil. Oh, oh. Bullshit. Yep. Turns out the piston firing itself out of the engine also destroyed the oil pan, and the engine had no oil in it. <laughs> no oil is bad. I didn't know that the oil pan had a hole in it. All I had done was check the dipstick, which read no oil, <laughs> so I tried adding an entire bottle of motor oil, which went through the engine and out of the pan onto the floor. Yeah. Well done. 
After fixing the oil pen and adding another bottle of motor oil, the car did indeed work just fine. The car worked, but my feeble little brain did not. So much to test RGB. the car, I decided against driving it and instead just revved the engine a bit. Enough to get the water in the radiator hot enough to where it exploded out of the camp. Oh shit. Me, being a bit of an idiot and wanting to get a better look, switched no. off the engine and unscrewed the cap, which, let me remind you, had a bunch no. of superheated steam underneath it. I've seen that happen to somebody once. I cried. I thought that he had lost his eye. Well, that was not in a video game. Oh, my eyes! I'm a fucking idiot. Now, the car could run, which is all great, but if I wanted to win the rally race in this thing, I would need to substantially upgrade it. Better tires, better wheels, a better engine, better exhaust, proper racing seats, nitrous, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. To get these upgrades, we would need money. Yeah, lots which you are short on. Of money. And me? Well, I was broke. In my summer car, there are a lot of ways of making money. Everything from chopping and delivering firewood, to putting ads in people's letterboxes, to illegally brewing sugar wine and selling it to the local alcoholic. <laughs> One of the best jobs you can do is finding junk cars by the side of the road and towing them back to the repair shop. The first bit of junk I found was this bucket thing. <laughs> the day I chose to do this wasn't exactly ideal. Saturday. The rally would be on and cars would be flying oh, down the dirt road no. every few minutes. That, however, was not the issue. The issue was these guys standing by the road to watch the rally, and my, uh, less than optimal driving. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna kill them! <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, this action had sealed my fate. Since it was Saturday, the shop wasn't even open, so I left the junk there and drove the rest of the way home on the dirt track, where every few minutes an idiot rally driver would smash into me at incredible speed. Back home, I sleep. Today was going to be good. Today was going to be productive. Today right. I was going to get the bat. The gods! The gods are dead! Oh shit. <laughs> yep. That guy I ran over earlier, he died. Yeah, well. <laughs> well. Shit. Well, he's really lucky because he's in a Finnish prison. They are well known for being very rehabilitative. Even more than the Danish ones are. After all, Finland is known for being the happiest country in the world. They did a great job at uh, wanting to make people feel human, although they're criminals. I guess a lot of you may have come across the uh, videos of the uh, Finnish open prison where they can literally get uh, ice cream, cake and poppies. Yeah, they, they come and go. <laughs> I mean, we have that here as well. So it's not uh, it's not too uh, strange. But it's, it's like in comparison to many places in the world, especially in the US where you have the prison industrial complex. Yeah, it's, it's something else. Prison. Our stay here was for 10 days. May not seem so bad, especially considering we murdered someone. But 10 <laughs> days in my summer car is 20 hours. Factoring in sleep, our stay here could be as low as 15-ish hours, real time. No abusing safe states, just sitting here. Yep. Damn. Okay, time's up. Freedom. In prison, I had hatched a devious plan. Robbery. Timos. Oh, a no. simple establishment. The grocery store on one end, and the pub on the other. The pub has this inside. <laughs> a slot machine. A man. Timo lost the keys to it a while ago, so it's just been sitting there collecting cash. The plan was simple. Drive the tractor into town, smash the window with the fork, attach the machine to the fork, and violently yank it out of the store. The plan sounded good enough, and so, the heist was on. I loaded up the tractor and drove it into town in the dead of night. There, I found our victim, Timo's pub, and the slot machine inside. Unlucky for us, though, were these two guys outside. So, with some quick thinking, I used the tractor's fork loader and, uh, moved them. <laughs> I smashed open the window, attached the machine to the tractor, and yanked it out with ferocious anger. Yes. Wow, it works. I took it to the sports field, laid it down on its front, pried off the back plate with a screwdriver, and began ransacking it for everything it had. Cool. <laughs> everything it had turned out to be 7,000 marks. Not bad. Hey. A celebration. Stop. Marks. I'm sorry. What year are we? When is my summer car released? 
2016. Because I know that post 2012 and such, a lot of countries had um, officially taken the euro to them. Like I know it was early 2000s that most already took the euro to them. Unla unless, of course, you were like either Scandinavian or the UK. Uh, but most that were part of the European Union, uh, EU, took the euro as their currency. But I guess that some areas still use marker. The was in order. I popped over to Timo's and bought myself a pizza for 2,700 marks. Somehow he knew I had broken his window and had fined me for my trouble. Prison had made me a violent, angry man. And this sent me completely over the edge. I sculled back a healthy 10 beers and began pissing and shitting all over the place. These fucking bastards had locked me up for doing basically nothing. And now basically they nothing. what was rightfully mine. I drank more. I pissed more. I punched this guy in the head. I took the slot machine to the highway and placed it in the way of oncoming cars. I was here to tear down society. Fuck it. The rally was on. They wanted to lock me up for running over one guy. Well, how about I run over all these fuckers? Well, well in jail again. Shit. 153 days in oh, only 150 days. <laughs> well, <laughs> I I guess that the the, the good favor of uh, the, the the finish is a uh, it's a bit extreme. <laughs> Prison is a long time, about 230 hours of waiting that I uh, definitely waited for. It gave me time right. to think, to consider, to ponder. Was I on the right path? Was oh, a life of crime really for me? No. Once I got out of here, it was time to build the car and win that goddamn rally. <laughs> and in no time at all, I was out. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Our first task was getting the car inspected. We wouldn't even be allowed to participate if the car wasn't road legal. So I had to make it road legal. To do that, I needed more money. And no, I would not be partaking in any more crime to do this. I was a new man. So Bullshit. My first money-making venture was illegally brewing sugar wine to sell to the local alcoholic. You know. Baby steps. Baby steps. Like a businessman. <laughs> Firewood. First you chop it, then you deliver. 3,400 marks. Oh. Sewage. My uncle lost his license traveling at 169 kilometers an hour on the M31, and he's given me the keys to his sewage Whoa. truck. Suck out sewage, get paid. Sewage. More sewage. The sewage truck is very big. Make sure to drive it carefully and watch out for that pole. More sewage. The tank is full. Time to dump it in the waste treatment plant. Whoopsie, I accidentally dumped it all over the floor. We got cash. Upgrades. Rear wing. Very important. Gauge cluster. Bam. Right. Tachometer. Bam. Drunk man is calling. Drive him home. Spoilers Money. for the win. Green car driving. Fuck. Okay. Listen, mate. I just need you to fuck off. Right now. <laughs> Grandma wants groceries. I buy grandma a bunch of groceries. Drunk man to live at home again. Sugar wine sold to drunk man. Sewage. So much sewage. Dead moose on the highway. Wait a minute. This isn't Finland. Timo wants me to advertise. Okay, Timo. I'll advertise for you, Timo. I have flipped the car. Picking strawberries. Man insults you while you make a terrible wage. Who are you looking at, you fucking dickhead? I forgot about grandma's groceries. They've all gone off. Here you go, grandma. Eight kilos of spoiled sausages and 20 liters of moldy milk. Yes, grandma. Ooh. That's awesome, grandma. Can I have my money? Yes, grandma. Really cool, grandma. Okay. Finally. 74 marks. More sugar wine deliveries. That's not enough. Hey, look. It's Penna. I'll just stop to let him cross the intersection. <laughs> Cruising down the street in my 6'4. Jocking the bitches. Slapping the... Is that a B? <laughs> and now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Inspection. Will we pass? Will no. we fail? Who knows? Well, this guy does. How does he know? Uh, just fucking banging on the car with a screwdriver. Yikes. Yep. And what do you know? We failed. You fucking dickhead. Do you know who I am? I need this car right now. You know what? I'll be right back. <laughs> I fixed up everything Mr. Inspection Dickhead wanted me to fix. Got him to hit my car with his trusty screwdriver again. And what do you know? We passed. The repair shop owner Fleetari caught wind I had shat all over the inspection shop parking lot and rewarded me with a 50% discount and 10 bottles of the strongest booze in all of Finland. Reward. Thanks, mate. Gentlemen, the time was upon us. The car was working well. It was registered and it had a few upgrades. The day was Saturday. I could just tell big things were going to happen today. I drove up to the rally sign-up station and signed up. Well, I would have signed up if I hadn't forgotten my helmet. Shit, 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 shit. Satsuma was in fact drivable, but had been having a few issues with the suspension. Quite a few issues, in fact. Cornering was basically impossible, and when I got oh. out of the car, it did this. Hmm. I found that if I took a wheel off and then just stuck it back on. Oh. Oh. So, 
Rally o'clock, it was. I drove to the start, <laughs> I this up. guy counted me down, and off I went. The race did not last long. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, flip! Oh flip. no, Total. Shit! Attempt two, this time, was even worse. <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> Attempt three. This time was even worse. The future frogman keeps telling himself, my pain is a lot greater than yours. Oh, God, fuck. Attempt four. This time okay. it took things a little slower. Instead of barreling around the corners at over 100 kilometers an hour and flying off the track, I took yeah, them well. at 80 kilometers an hour, keeping all four wheels in contact with the ground and preventing any crashes. Yeah, this especially when you have bad suspension. I didn't even crash once throughout the entire track. Just, you know, after I finish. Slow and steady does win the race, boys. Now let's see what we got. Dead last. Yep. But it's not that bad. It's not that bad. He's still within the six minute mark, so we just have to do a few more improvements and he'll be good. Dead last. All right. Okay, I guess I'll. Uh... Fuck, fuck, fuck. All hope wasn't lost. Stage two of the race was tomorrow, and it was the same route as stage one, but in reverse. Oh. Surely tomorrow. I would redeem myself. I took the car back to the start of the rally and parked there overnight as per the rules. Except I didn't read the rules closely enough because I parked in the wrong spot. To get to the start of stage two, I'd have to take the highway, which has a speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour. I'd been completely ignoring the speed limit, which turned out to be quite a costly mistake. Oh no, he's gonna get fined. This little fucker got me going 115 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. Only 15% over. I'm sure the fine isn't that bad. Shit. That is a lot of money. I didn't have the money to pay the fine, so I just gave him the finger and fucked off. Anyway, I had a job to do. Get a good time on the second stage and try my best to get out of last place. And before I knew it, the rally was on. On the straights I got up to 100 kilometers an hour, and in the turns I could manage just a bit below that. Of course, going at this speed with my flimsy little car, mistakes were bound to happen. We spun. But oh, no. we could keep going. Then we flipped the car. <laughs> no! But we could but keep, we going. keep going. Oh, oh. Yeah. Then we launched it into a ditch. <gasps> the door was hanging off, but we could keep, we could going. keep going. And then we hit a rock. Oh no. Oh. We could not keep going. <laughs> I was extremely close to the end, so I jumped out of the car and legged it all the way to the finish line. I still well, that's not extremely close. All the tumbling around of the car, we had driven fairly well, and so I checked our time. It, uh, it's not even good. on the list. My time was so bad it didn't even show up on the leaderboard. A time so terrible that it sent me spiraling into a deep depression. <laughs> I drank a case of beer, drove to Fleetari's, found the ten bottles of booze, and drank until I blacked out. And blacked out again. <laughs> and blacked out again. And again, and again, and again. And then it was next week. During my bout of violent alcoholism, I found 9,000 marks of unpaid fines on the kitchen counter. In uh, addition to the 14,000 that he got before. Fines. So, I was in a lot of debt, the police would probably be at my door to throw me back in jail soon, and I still had a rally to win. Things were not looking good in the Mart household. I needed money and fast. So when Mr. Drunk Man called at 2am asking for a ride home, I obliged. I picked him up, and he began his usual drunken babbling. But this time, he let me in on a little secret. His wife had bought a winning lottery ticket, and he had stolen it and the money without her realizing. He said he kept the money hidden away in a suitcase. How much money? Five million marks. Wow. If I could find that suitcase, that would be enough. A mark is around five euros. No. What am I saying? A euro is about five mark. So that's a million euros. Is that correct? I think it's correct. But man, lucky man. But still a scummy man for having stolen the wife's winning lottery ticket. Of money to pay off my debts and build the rally car of my dreams. He's Did gonna I really steal his steal money. Man? 
I had sworn off a life of crime. Yet here I was, considering stealing millions from this guy who thinks he's my friend. Approximately three seconds of pondering later, I concluded... <laughs> yes. <money. laughs> to find the briefcase, I would have to scour the entire map. Every little nook, every cranny... Oh, look, there it is. <laughs> oh. I threw it in the back of my car and drove home, having a minor accident on the way. Shit. Please don't lose the money. Oh. I opened the briefcase, and oh my, that is a lot of money. Literally 15,000 presses of E later, I was left with one and a half million marks. Okay. Much less than the advertised five million. But still. But hey, he probably spent it on sugar wine or something. It was time for some upgrades. I bought the entire catalog. The best suspension, the best carburetor, nitrous, a new steering wheel, all the cool body panels, the best radiator, time on the dynamometer to measure our immense power. Even the fresh new paint job. And most importantly, a cool paint job. Gentlemen, oh. the car was ready. Okay, even two. better. I gave it a good test on the highway, and of course, I got pulled over and fined 30,000 marks on the spot. Oh, fucking dickhead. The car was ready, but I needed some practice. So I took it to the dirt track and drove the route over and over. Every corner, every gear shift, each slight bump and bend. I even got rid of the stick shift that switched the paddles for speedier shifting. And a couple nice. of hours of practice later, we were finally ready for competition. Saturday, the start of the rally. Big things were about to happen. This he dude best win. me down. And off we went. The car was very fast. All the upgrades had turned it into an absolute weapon on the track. I shot past the repair shop, around the sharp bends, went a bit wide on this turn and hit a tree, but let's ignore that. Past the turn off to my house, past grandma's house, over the train tracks, and across the line. The pace felt very good, and checking the standings confirmed my suspicions. Bam. Oh yes. Nice. That's right, fellas. First place. I was officially in the running to actually win the rally. All I had to do was have a similarly good performance, on stage two. I took the car back to the parking area and parked in the right spot and went back home. Tomorrow, I was gonna win. Back home, I sleep. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this sleep was a bit different. I was not woken by the pleasant sounds of the Finnish countryside or even the phone ring, but by a belligerent drunk man in my room with an axe. Oh, no! <laughs> Turns out he uh, didn't appreciate me taking his money. Fair enough. Obviously. Well, with him subdued, I went to finish the rally. Damn the hair under Stage his arms. Two. This time I parked in the correct spot and wouldn't be incurring a time penalty. I took the car to the start of the next stage where I signed up, and before I knew it, the rally was on. All that practice had paid off. I knew the corners. I knew the bumps. We flew over the train tracks, past Grandma's house, past the turn off to my house, into the sharp left turn, past the drunk man's house, past the repair shop and the mansion with wasps in it, through the farmland, and before I knew it, the race was done. Cool. There it was. Oh yes, we had driven pretty damn good, and we're 30 seconds ahead of second place. <sighs> ah, sweet victory. I knew just how to celebrate. The fireworks back home. On the way back, I crossed the bridge. I'd crossed the bridge many times at this point, but this time, it felt different. No! 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 Of all the endings that I've ever seen in any video game reviews, that, that was crazy. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. That got just a little bit too real there by the end. But I really do love how the video just took us through some emotional roller coaster. <laughs> From the anxiety of not being able to f finish the race to ending up in prison, getting, getting depressed and becoming an alcoholic. That was an entire character arc, 
But guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please do go and subscribe to Martin Citoopins if you haven't already. And if you have any other su uh, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I wish you all to have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one.